Andy here again from Fence Post, and there was a lot of chatter about my five reasons you should not start a vinyl record collection video that I did and published a few weeks back, both for collecting and against it. Today, I'm gonna make the opposite argument. Five reasons you should start a vinyl record collection. And right off the bat, I have to address the haters. Isha Halim told me to, quote, calm down, take a Valium, splash water on my face, and take a deep breath. I mean, I get passionate about this stuff. While I don't take pills, I do appreciate your concern for my well-being. That said, let's get started and dig in. Vinyl has superior sound quality. One of the primary advantages and an argument that gets made a lot for vinyl records is their rich, warm sound quality. Analog recordings capture nuances and details that can be lost in digital formats, providing a more authentic listening experience. Granted, I know the true answer to that question, which sounds better when you compare vinyl and digital or even vinyl and CD is, it depends. But in many cases, I'd make the argument that yeah, vinyl does kind of sound better. For more on this topic, I do recommend checking out the podcast episode from the ongoing history of new music with Alan Cross. A good example of which sounds better leaning towards vinyl is this album right here, the 2022 album by Always called Blue Rev. I do talk a little bit more about that in my video here on YouTube. You can find a link to that in the description. Contrary to this, you have right here, an original pressing of The Queen is Dead. Does not nearly sound as good as the 2011 remaster, which I've only heard digitally. Technically, in that case, digital does sound better. Then again, were I to have that on vinyl, most likely there'd be very little difference between the two. And yes, it really does depend on the source material. Then take something like this right here, my super beat up copy of Boom by Pacific Northwest garage punk pioneers, the Sonics. The subtle crackle of the needle on vinyl actually adds to the audible aesthetics of the album. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this list. Vinyl is tangible and collectible. Vinyl records offer a physical and tactile experience, holding a record in your hands, admiring the artwork and the packaging, and carefully placing the needle on the groove can be very nostalgic and extremely satisfying. Records also hold a sentimental value and can become cherished items in your collection. Vinyl records offer the possibility of discovering hidden or rare recordings that might not be readily available in digital formats. Thrift stores, used record shops, and flea markets can be a treasure trove for finding unique and undiscovered music. And if you know your stuff, you can uncover some really great, great deals. Vinyl is a very experiential hobby. These rarities that we dig up on what we tend to refer as crate digs are often dubbed as grails after the mythical holy grail. A grail is defined as a record or piece of music that you've wanted and have been looking for forever but have never been able to find or pick up for whatever reason. Typically, that reason is kind of trifold. One, it's rare. Two, it's expensive. And Three, it's really hard to find a good quality pressing. Kind of like that Sonic's Boom album. Take this for example, a super early pressing of the Velvet Underground and Nico. This has a fully unpeeled banana on it, something I never thought I'd dig up, let alone pay just 60 bucks for. A true grail uncovered. Vinyl has artistic and visual appeal. Vinyl records often feature large album covers with stunning artwork. The visual aspect adds to the overall experience of listening to the music, creating a sense of connection between the music and the visual representation. Packaging may also include inserts, additional artwork, vinyl with very cool colors and patterns in the wax, and so much more. This adds to the visual and artistic elements that make this a truly fun 
hobby. I recall in a paper I wrote for an undergraduate PR class I took in the early to mid 2000s talking about the RIAA or Record Industry Association of America and what they were doing wrong in their approach to what was then a brand new trend of digital music. In my report at the time, I said that providing added value through enhanced artwork, supplemental content, and bonus material is a much better use of their time rather than going after people downloading the latest crappy Metallica album on Napster. That fans would ultimately be swayed back to the physical format through these exact elements. I was kind of right, as vinyl has seen a massive resurgence. However, I was wrong in the format as at the time my focus was on enhanced CDs. I think a great example of this in play from my collection is an album like this, Clash the Truth by Beach Fossils. I love this album. It's probably my favorite by the band. Clash the Truth is celebrating its 10 year anniversary this year and not all that long ago I picked up this which is the fifth anniversary pressing despite already owning an original pressing in my collection. Why? Because this is a double LP and it contains seven original demos of songs from the album. For artists that have a solid fan base, these types of pressings are truly great and make for repeat buyers and continued fans. As an aside, if anyone in the States is looking for a copy of the original pressing on black vinyl, I'm selling it over on Discogs. Vinyl has a strong community and social aspect to it. Vinyl record collecting has a vibrant and passionate community. I mean, it's extremely present here on YouTube and I'm barely even tapped into it yet. Hint, please subscribe. And sure, while there are those characters you kind of want to avoid due to their cluelessness and complete lack of social skills, and also just because they're mean assholes, the amount of genuine people with a vast wealth of knowledge and desire to share that in an authentic and genuine way with others overpowers the risk of running into the opposite. So connecting and conversing with other collectors, attending record fairs, engaging in discussions about music and vinyl can be an enjoyable way to share your passion and expand your knowledge. I mean, that's why I started this channel. That brings me to this right here. Back in the early 2010s, I bought this seven inch single on eBay. The band is Tullycraft, a long time indie pop band with punk leanings out of the Pacific Northwest. I didn't know it at the time, but the person I bought it from lived just one small town away from the small town I was living in, in Northwest Washington State at the time. His name is Brett. Brett and I became good friends and I'd invite him into the studio several times as a co-host on the radio show I had at the time at the little community station. Likewise, I developed many friendships at my local small town record store back in Washington. And when it comes down to it, those are the people I have missed most since moving to Texas. We are down to the final one, number five, and it is this. Vinyl is inherently nostalgic. Vinyl records, just like music, has a unique ability to transport us back in time and evoke feelings of nostalgia. Listening to music on vinyl can recreate the experience of a bygone era, allowing us to connect with the past and relive memories associated with specific songs or albums. It can even bring them up out of the depth. The crackling sound, which I've mentioned a few times with the Sonics album, the physical interaction with the record, like the Beach Fossils one. And then there's simply the overall vintage aesthetic that can stir up emotions and create a deeper sense of connection to the music and the era it represents. I talk about that in my coverage of the Beach Boys album, Pet Sounds. Collecting vinyl records can become a journey of rediscovery, rekindling old memories, and forging new ones as you explore the vast world of music. After years of ignoring this band, I found a brand new love for the Smashing Pumpkins after finding this original copy of Siamese Dream at my local record shop back in Washington. Perfect example right here. This continued a few years later in 2018 while journaling. A mostly forgotten memory 
resurfaced that featured the song Disarm off of this album. Both that experience and the song's lyrics threw me into this period of immense personal growth, allowing me to let go of certain beliefs that really no longer served me. All right, that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with a fellow music fan. These are the things that I love about being a record collector, regardless of what I said in my video saying it was a bad idea. And if you haven't watched that one yet, check that out right here. It's an entertaining one. I get a little passionate. At the very least, these are things that you should be aware of as you start your own vinyl collecting journey. I'm Andy, this is Fence Post, the vinyl channel, and I will see you next time.